heroin and the opiate drugs turn off the respiratory drive in the brain and particularly with an injection of heroin the breathing gets very shallow if you have a large dose of heroin somebody may stop breathing completely and they die from not breathing around 6100 overdose deaths mainly related to heroin and other opioids have been reported in Europe in 2012 Overall, over the past years, there is a decrease in Europe, but still some countries report an increase. Drug overdose continues to be one of the main causes of death among problem drug users, and reducing fatal overdose remains a major challenge for public health. In a hospital setting, or when an ambulance turns up, we have an antidote that we give, which is naloxone. If we were dealing with other medical conditions like epilepsy or diabetes, we would know that we had to teach the patient themselves, but also their partner and their family, that if this crisis occurs, here is how you deal with the emergency whilst you're waiting for the ambulance to come. And we need to adopt that approach in the, in the drug treatment field. So we emphasize that there should be A, B, C, naloxone. A is to call an ambulance. B is to check somebody's breathing. Uh, C is to put them to the recovery position and then to give the naloxone. So the naloxone on its own is not the way to manage it. Take-home naloxone programs emerged during the 90s on the base of research showing that overdose deaths occur very often in the presence of others. These programs include education and training on first aid interventions for drug users, family members and their peers. We found some evidence from the United States that communities providing education and training with take-home naloxone reduced overdose mortality. In Europe, several countries report the existence of some formats of these programs. Unser Projekt war, soweit ich weiß, das erste in, nicht nur in Deutschland, sondern in Europa. Es begann 1998. Wir hatten dann im Rahmen des Projekts über 200 Rückmeldungen und über 100 Naloxon-Anwendungen. Was nicht so geklappt hat, war tatsächlich die Inanspruchnahme von professioneller Hilfe, sprich den Notarztruf. In Estonia we have very high drug-related death rate. And mostly the death cases are related with the use of fentanyl. We provide prenoxad uh, injection and information materials. It's provided mainly uh, to the patients and to the close ones and healthcare providers. What is our like maybe a little bit visual thinking, but uh, we would like that police would have also someday the naloxone in their like, first aid kit. En Cataluña, para que tenga un impacto a nivel de salud pública, el gobierno de Cataluña, el programa de drogodependencias, ha intentado hacer un proyecto de formación sistemática. El elemento clave de este proyecto es formar a los propios afectados para que conozcan los factores de riesgo para poderlos prevenir, identificar cuando aparecen las sobredosis y saber qué hacer. Y entre este saber qué hacer, un componente más, no el primero, es inyectar naloxona. The Scottish Government decided to fund a national naloxone programme. It can be such a powerful message to actually supply someone with naloxone because it genuinely shows that you care about that person, whether they live or die. In order to get a supply, people have to receive some training in the use of naloxone. Uh, initially, when this first started, we delivered it in groups, but it seemed to be not that effective. So now the main focus for the programme is to do a brief intervention. It takes place over 10 minutes, and what I would say is uh, never underestimate potential outcomes of a brief intervention with somebody giving them enough skills. The National Danish Scheme, as we call it, the Naloxone Scheme, is a sort of a network construction uh, with the participating uh, treatment facilities where people are trained. The setting of training for giving Naloxone is a very good setting for having other uh, health-related issues taking up with the drug users. In Norway, we have um, a naloxone program that has been launched uh, actually by the Minister of Health and Social Affairs in Norway as part of a national plan. We in Norway, I think a little bit special from, from other countries in Europe, we are using nasal naloxone. 
the same product, uh, which is injected in most other countries, but we use it with a nasal atomizer and adapter, and um, the route of administration is nasal. First of all, we need to improve the naloxone that we give out. So you say, why couldn't it be a, a ready-filled syringe? And we now have that. We'd also want to look at whether there might be other ways in which naloxone could be given. That's still a development project. We're still waiting evidence to show its reliability and its effectiveness. But I'd expect some of those non-injectable routes of naloxone to be part of what we have in the future. Most opioid users overdose because they misjudge their own tolerance. We now have research that shows training opioid users, their peers and families is effective and that these groups can successfully manage overdoses they witness. Naloxone should be much more available. It is cheap and effective and it has no side effects.